Hey guys. Okay, so this is episode five of the Hive Chronicles. If you haven't seen from episode one, I'll link it up above here. Um, now in the last episode, I had talked about my uh, going to the allergist, doing the prick test that went terrible, and the lung test that went oh so great. <laughs> and now I'm going to be going into what she wanted to do with a follow-up to that bad prick test. So, uh, not many people have 48 hours of massive, massive kiwi-sized hives, uh, especially not where they were pricked, but I had them like all the way down to my feet, on my spine, knees, shins, really everywhere. Um, so she disqualified me as a candidate for exposure therapy for a lot of my allergies. But <laughs> she was also now concerned that what is causing my hives might be autoimmune. So she was thinking like Hashimoto's. So she had some blood work done for me, and also she sent me for a brain MRI. Now the reason for the brain MRI is that I have a lot of localized numbness, tingling, uh, my pupils are two different sizes, which is actually caused by like a trauma, but she still was concerned, just in case, um, uh, as well as now my hives and being itchy all the time can also be like, an issue that is related to MS. So she wanted to rule out MS with a brain MRI. So I went and did the blood work. That came back with some thyroid irregularities, but she did more blood work to investigate and nothing apart from, again, those low IgMs, which she didn't seem too concerned about. Now, the... <laughs> MRI came back showing I didn't have MS, showed all of my damage from playing sports, but um, most significantly, it showed that I had a fully blocked and opaqued maxillary sinus, which is the one under your eye, which is why actually this eyeball is like a little lower than this one, adding to my list of flaws. So, um, she sent me to an ENT. So I go to see this ENT who's a specialized sinus surgeon and he does a round of antibiotics and it does what he thinks it would have done, nothing. Uh, this sinus is fully blocked. So he confirms with a CT scan of my head, yep, this thing is fully blocked. And not only that, my nose has got all kinds of issues, but step one is having sinus surgery. So he essentially went and they cut you like a new entrance to the sinus because once a sinus has been blocked off for enough years, that entrance to the sinus, you can't even get into to clean it out. You actually have to cut a new one like it's sealed. So he assumed after the surgery that the sinus had probably been that way for seven plus years. So it's a good thing I, that I had that MRI. <laughs> um, also, this was an active infection constantly in, for the last like seven or more years. So maybe that was contributing to my hives. It wasn't. Same thing, still have hives. Um, but during that surgery, he also noted that there's a few other issues in my nose and advised me to go see a different sinus surgeon um, with some of my other breathing issues. I've always said, if you were to plug, my, like if you were to cover my mouth, I would probably die. Like I can't breathe through my nose good enough to survive. So uh, I had to go see a different surgeon for that, which would be a couple more months down the line yet. So in the meantime, I had that surgery. He snaked in, cleaned it all out. Everything was fine. In fact, I also recovered from it really, really fast. I mean, my big W last episode was my excellent lungs. My big W this episode is I heal from things really, really fast. So um, this sinus surgery, I felt like I could have gone back to work that afternoon if I wasn't so whacked out on, you know, being put under. 
Uh, really, everything was totally fine. I took a couple days just to make sure because you can start to bleed. But I've heard horror stories of people having this surgery to basically fix uh, infected sinuses and just being in terrible pain and having a horrible recovery. And mine was like, I, I felt great. Like, <laughs> um, so no complaints. Um, but it was around this time also that my Blexton really started to not work for me. So my hives were getting like frequent and a lot worse. Like I would take my Blexton and I'd have to double up. Like I was having to increase doses. This was again, like I'd now been on it for about a year. So I was finding that even if I would take Blexton in the morning, if I ran it, you know, if I was at work at like 1.30, 2 p.m., if I, I don't know, rubbed up on something, I'd get covered in hives despite this Blexton. So I'd have to come home, take more. Like I was taking so much Blexton. <laughs> um, my derm had advised me that I can take like four a day. Uh, I know that it's like, it's, it's supposed to be fairly safe. So I was kind of pushing it sometimes. So this takes me right up to the end of 2018, meaning I had had these chronic hives for over a year and still no fix. I'd now had a sinus fixed. I had fantastic lungs that were now recognized. <laughs> um, but the hives were getting worse and there was still no rhyme or reason. It was not something autoimmune for me. It's just was an un, a big old unknown. So in my next episode, I'm jetting off to Korea for a full month to go meet my friend who's uh, living there studying Korean. So uh, it's for the entire month of February, I'll be in Korea in the next episode and I'll explain what happened there because holy moly, I almost died in Korea. <laughs> so thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.